Recently, a really weird study was published in the journal Current Biology that had really weird and really fascinating results. I'm going to read you the paper's whole summary. It, it's kind of a long passage, but when I'm done, I'll break it down and I'll explain what all of it means. So the researchers from Johns Hopkins Medical summarized their study by saying, and I quote, Human and octopus lineages are separated by over 500 million years of evolution and show divergent anatomical patterns of brain organization. Despite these differences, growing evidence suggests that ancient neurotransmitter systems are shared across vertebrate and invertebrate species, and in many cases enable overlapping functions. Sociality is widespread across the animal kingdom, with numerous examples in both invertebrate, e.g. bees, ants, termites, and shrimps, and vertebrate lineages, e.g. fish, birds, rodents, and primates. Serotonin is an evolutionarily ancient molecule that has been implicated in regulating both invertebrate and vertebrate social behaviors, raising the possibility that this neurotransmitter's prosocial functions may be conserved across evolution. Members of the order Octopoda are predominantly asocial and solitary. Although at this time it is unknown whether serotonergic signaling systems are functionally conserved in octopuses, ethological studies indicate that agonistic behaviors are suspended during mating, suggesting that neural mechanisms subserving social behaviors exist in octopuses but are suppressed outside the reproductive period. Here, we provide evidence that, as in humans, the phenethylamine plus minus 3,4-methylendeoxymethamphetamine, or MDMA, enhances acute prosocial behaviors in octopus bimaculoides. This finding is paralleled by the evolutionary conservation of the serotonin transporter binding site of MDMA in the O. bimaculoides genome. Taken together, these data provide evidence that the neural mechanisms subserving social behaviors exist in O. bimaculoides and indicate that the role of serotonergic neurotransmission in regulating social behaviors is evolutionarily conserved. Unquote. Damn, okay, that was intense, so let me break it down. The researchers began by explaining that there's a vast evolutionary gulf that separates octopus and humans. We share a common ancestor that existed long before vertebrates, more than 500 million years ago. We're on virtually opposite ends of the animal kingdom, and everything about us, an octopus, from our lifestyles to our habitats to our brain structure, is wildly different. And yet, despite this, there's evidence that various neurotransmitter systems, like the serotonin reward system, for example, have been preserved across the animal kingdom even across a genetic chasm as wide as the one that separates us and octopus. Specifically, the researchers talk about a serotonin transporter binding site protein called SERT, or S-E-R-T, which is encoded by the SLC6A4 gene. Octopuses possess two different versions of this gene, while humans possess one. Next, the researchers start talking about social behavior, and how social behavior is seen in both invertebrate and vertebrate species, but that octopus, or at least some octopus, like the California two-spotted octopus, are an exception, and they tend to live solitary, almost antisocial lives. The only time these octopus aren't solitary is when they feel the need to breed. During their reproductive period, whatever mechanisms that encourage solitary behavior are shut off or diminished and the octopus is much more inclined to seek out other octopus to interact with, uh, preferably other octopus to mate with. The researchers argue that this means that the octopus brain has retained the neural wiring that's necessary for pro-social behavior, but evolution has modulated these neural systems in the octopus so that they're only active during breeding times. But the neural architecture is still there, even if it's dormant. Now this is where stuff starts to get super weird and super crazy. Working under the premise that humans and octopus share the same kind of serotonin receptor, the lead researcher, Gould Dolan, and her colleagues dosed some of these California two-spotted octopus with ecstasy. They gave them MDMA. Why, you might ask? Why not? To see what would happen. For science! No, but seriously, what did happen was super fascinating. The octopus began to show, quote, acute prosocial behaviors, unquote. Part of their experimental setup involved a three-chambered area. The middle chamber would be empty, 
and a chamber on one side would have some kind of neutral toy, some kind of object that the, uh, that the octopus could interact with. And on the other side, in the, uh, in the third chamber over there, there was uh, another individual octopus who was kept in kind of a containment so that they could see each other and they could interact through a, uh, through a shared compartment, but they couldn't actually attack each other or mate with each other. So when a male octopus was given a choice between interacting with the, with the neutral toy or interacting with, uh, with another male octopus, the test octopus, this test male, would generally choose the toy so as to avoid the other male octopus. This is because in the wild, these solitary males usually wouldn't run into one another. And if they did, there would usually be some kind of conflict. However, when high on MDMA, the male octopus was much more interested in the other male octopus, and they spent much more time in close proximity, engaging in non-violent and non-threatening behaviors, which is something you almost never see between male octopus who get too close to each other out in the wild. Then, when given the choice between a toy and interacting with a female octopus, the male octopus would generally choose the toy. Unless it was breeding time, in which case he would choose the female. But while high on MDMA, the male octopus was generally always super interested in the female octopus, and he would spend a lot of time around her, even if it wasn't technically breeding time. In other words, the octopus showed much more frequent interactions with other octopus, which included friendlier male-male interactions and much friendlier, much more frequently erotic interactions between male and female octopus. When given MDMA, these octopus quite literally began to behave just like humans do when humans are high on MDMA. Now, while all of this stuff with MDMA is really cool and really weird, there are more serious biological conclusions to be made. The most obvious conclusion is that the specific serotonin receptor gene has been conserved for half a billion years across the animal kingdom. This means that serotonergic regulation of social behavior is a super deep, super critical process fundamental to animal life, with an origin that's buried in the mists of ancient evolutionary history, near the very root of the branch on the tree of life that is animalia. Because this gene has been preserved for so long, and not only is it critical to the function of animal life, it's also extremely sensitive to mutation, and thus it's highly conserved. This sensitivity means that almost every mutation to the serotonergic system is deleterious, and critically impairs the serotonergic reward system in the brain meat. The gene variants that exist across the animal kingdom are all really similar, even though they've had 500 million years to evolve and accumulate mutations and diverge, they really aren't all that different. Because, like I said, they're extremely sensitive to mutation. The takeaway here is that the serotonergic system really is way more deeply rooted in animal evolution than we may have initially thought. And that's pretty cool. Next up, the researchers want to try this experiment on the Pacific Striped Octopus, which is naturally a more social octopus that lives in colonies and maintains long-term monogamous relationships. Seeing how MDMA affects social behavior in an already social species of octopus could further inform us as to the function and the role of serotonin in this distant branch of the kingdom Animalia, separated from us evolutionarily by more than 500 million years. The lead author of the study, Gould Dolan, said, and I quote, Dinosaurs came and went in the interval that we're talking about. It's been a part of our genetic makeup for such a long time that maybe it explains why social behaviors are so important in humans, unquote. Unquote.